I take refuge in the Buddha, wishing for all sentient beings to understand the great way profoundly and make the greatest resolve. I take refuge in the Dharma, wishing for all sentient beings to delve deeply into the sutras, causing their wisdom to be as broad as the sea. I take refuge in the Sangha, wishing all sentient beings to lead the congregation in harmony, entirely without obstruction. Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhamam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami I shall now continue with Reverend Suji's Profession of Faith Articles 2 through 8. We feel deeply that our hearts are dark with ignorance and passions, that even our good acts are tainted with the poison of selfishness, and that by ourselves we are incapable of true goodness. When we honestly look into the depths of our hearts, we see that all our thoughts, acts, and words are motivated by egocentricity whether it be plain self-preservation or happiness for others or self. Even altruistic acts are still relative. We are incapable of true absolute goodness because the very nature of life itself is finite, limited, and imperfect. Article 3. We are firmly determined to seek the spirit of Amida's primal vow which embraces all and forsakes none, which frees us from the world of impermanence and assures our birth into the pure land. Realizing the imperfection of this life, we seek the true ideal of the pure land as manifested in the primal vow of Amida Buddha. We have often heard of the expression, men or women without ideals perish, but fortunately, as disciples of Shinran Shonen, we embrace as our ideal the eternal life of Amida Buddha. What higher goal can we seek? Article 4. We rely wholeheartedly on Amida's grace, and, renouncing all good works contrived by self-power, we depend for our enlightenment on faith in other power. In the achievement of our goal, it is logical that our imperfect lives can never lead to perfection. Therefore, we rely wholeheartedly on Amida's power of perfect wisdom and compassion to make us perfectly enlightened. We renounce our attachment to our imperfect, finite self-power and identify ourselves with the other power. Other power does not mean another human power, but the power of Amida. To live in oneness with this power at all times is the life of one who recites the Nembutsu. Article 5. We rejoice that this grace is accorded freely and equally to us, as well as to all other living beings, and this joy pervades our every thought and act. Our hearts are filled with rejoicing, for that which seemed impossible, the attainment of Buddhahood, has been made possible by the universal gift of Amida Buddha. Nothing surpasses this joy. Article 6 We recite Namu Amida Butsu in gratitude for the great compassionate vow. The two pillars upholding our spiritual lives are gratitude and repentance. Namu Amida Butsu means, I place my faith in Amida Buddha. This expression is known as the Nambutsu and is recited verbally in deep gratitude for Amida's compassion. It must be pointed out clearly that the recitation is not a petitionary prayer asking Amida for salvation. Article 7 We regard all things with profound thankfulness and whether suffering or happiness comes to us we are content in the realization that Amida's grace is always with us. 
When we bow our heads in humble gratitude for Amita's compassion, this gratitude opens our spiritual eyes to the countless blessings with which we are surrounded. It is said that even in a single scrap of paper lying in the hallway, Renyo Shonen was able to discern the labor and the toil of the many hands that produced this single sheet. Furthermore, just as his heart was moved by the light of Amida's compassion, so was everything in this world touched by that same sacred light. Our lives seem to be so preoccupied by the concepts of duty and authority and rights. We say to ourselves, I have work for this dollar. It is my right to buy a cup of coffee. It is the duty of the owner of the coffee shop to give me good service. As a paying customer, I have the authority to demand good service for my money. While we are thinking thus, we become blind to all the human, natural, and sacred powers that have and are contributing to the existence of this beverage for my enjoyment. When we look upon this cup, as did Renyo Shonen upon the sheet of paper, we cannot help but join our hands in Gasho and say, I accept this in deep thanksgiving. Indeed, it is the thankful heart for Amita's compassion around which our lives revolve. In the long journey through life, we meet innumerable events that throw us into the depths of despair and incidents that transport us to the heights of joy. But the realization of Amita's grace makes us face life's sorrows with courageous resignation and accept happiness and success with humility. When Shinran Shonen was sentenced to exile from Kyoto, he did not stand at the outskirts of the city shaking his fists at the authorities who were subjecting him to hardships and humiliations. Instead, through the power of the Nembutsu, he transformed his misfortune into good fortune and rejoiced at the opportunity of being able to talk about Amida with folks who lived in the outlying districts. Article 8 We search within ourselves by the light of Amida's compassion and find that we have drowned in the ocean of selfish desires, that we have lost our way in the pursuit of power and gain. Though we have entered the company of the faithful, we are pained that true joy does not brighten our hearts. When we compare these various perspectives, we discover an inconsistency. On the one hand, we are joyful of Amida's grace, and on the other, we are pained true joy does not brighten our hearts. Here is the glaring paradox we discover in our inner lives when we see it under the light of Amida's compassion. It is only reasonable that if we are grateful for Amita's compassion, then our joy should be constant. On the contrary, we are so attached to worldly things, we cannot honestly declare that above all things I cherish Amita. Shinran Shonen too was conscious of this conflict. In his spiritual anguish he cried, Why can I not be so full of joy over Amita's compassion that I am inspired to dance on earth? He deeply repented his fierce passion for worldly things, which more than often blinded his spiritual insight. But it was for such beings that Amida made his primal vow. Therefore, the more he repented his selfish desires, the more grateful he became, and by that same token, the more he felt gratitude, the more repentant he became. Namo Mita Boots 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 Namo Mita Boats 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 Namo Mita Boats